first to face off with the fiery five is 24-year-old Mark Wong, who left his native Hong Kong to study at a young age. I came over to the UK when I was 13, alone with my brother. And my parents stayed back home, and being the only Asian kid in school was pretty difficult. As the years passed, Mark picked up some valuable skills that helped him to fit in. There was one thing I didn't know. If you know how to make a cocktail, how to brew a beer, you'd get invited to parties. Beer, then? Looks like beer. Does it? Well, well it's got hops in it. What's hops? Hops are what they make beer for. What they make beer out of. Yeah, I know. So, yeah, I knew <laughs> that. I knew that. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mark, the founder of Impossibrew, and I'm here today seeking an investment of £45,000 in exchange for 10% of my beer alternative company. I love beer, but because of my health, I had to stop two years ago. Since then, I'm on an impossible mission to find a healthier alternative to alcohol for when you don't want to drink, but still want to unwind with a pint. I found the solution when I went back home to Asia, where I discovered a whole new world of functional plants in which my ancestors would brew teas with for their relaxing medicinal benefits. Inspired by this, I began brewing my own beer using these ingredients, and after two years, the Impossible Brew Lager was born. It has only 49 calories per bottle and is packed full of active nutrients that support relaxation without drowsiness. I brewed a limited batch of 4,000 and released it to the public in March this year. To my surprise, it sold out within 12 weeks and our sales are doubling every single month during that time. Thank you for your time and I welcome any questions you may have. A new beer for the no and low alcohol market that also aids relaxation is the proposition from Mark Wong. It tastes lovely. Yeah, it does, doesn't really it? Really tastes good. He's looking for 45,000 pounds in return for a 10% stake in his business. You know, I, I don't really like beer. I can probably sit and drink that whole glass, and do you know what? For 49 calories, I might let myself drink the whole glass. <laughs> the locale lager has hit the spot with Sarah Davies. But Peter Jones appears to have picked up on a potential problem with the labelling of the beers. Well, you say that it's non-alcoholic, but it's not, is it? Because it says 0.5%. So it's like 10% of a strong beer. Yeah, so 0.5% in Europe is actually classified as non-alcoholic. Well. It's, it's quite odd because a ripe banana is 0.5% and a carton of store orange juice is also 0.5%. Uh, so it's just that they're not required to list them. Really? And so my bananas that I'm eating got alcohol in? <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh, no wonder I like bananas. <laughs> <laughs> just going back on your journey, health what happened to to make yeah. you stop drinking it was that I, I really liked it and i was drinking a little too much and i had markers that my liver wasn't doing very good and from that point i just knew you know i i, I had to stop you said that you sold quite a few thousand bottles since march what's been your revenue in those three months it's about 10 a little over ten thousand. gross margin gross margin is about three thousand five hundred so in three months, how much have you sold? In the first month, it was 630. Second month was 2,600. And then the third month was 6,300. OK, and then your forecast for this year, where do you believe it's going to go? So for this year, we're looking to do 55,000 with a gross profit of 20,000. And we're expecting to break even at the end of this year. How old are you? I'm 24. And what is it about you that makes you think that you're going to win? I think it's it's the passion that I that I have for this and my adaptability. Because for me, I came over to the UK with my brother, just the two of us, when I was 13, and I knew no English. And I really just went at it, just adapted and just kept learning English, kept trying everything I can. And eventually I got a double scholarship in school and also became the first non-Caucasian head boy in school as well. And from that, it's really about this challenging the impossible. Mark reveals his tenacious nature and fierce determination to succeed. Deborah Meaden now wants to find out about the sales strategy he set out on. Where have you been selling at the moment? It's mostly online and little bottle shops here and there. And how much is a case of 12 going to cost me? It's £39.99. 
okay? So this price is at, as, as about £2.99 to £3.30 on average, but later on, it'll be £2.49. And what is an average price on a low alcohol beer? Yeah, the average price is about £1.50 to £1.70. And if it, on the premium end, it hits about £2. So you're still above the premium end? Yeah. After a solid start, the beer pitch has gone somewhat flat as the Dragon's probing reveals the product's expensive price point. Tuka Suleiman is keen to find out what Mark's expecting a Dragon to deliver. Mark, Tuka, you've come for an investment. What is it that you're going to need from us? Yeah, it's, it's mainly distribution and the contacts. So at the moment, we're really lasering down our focus online. But we're in talks with some retailers. Give me three retailers you want to be in. We want to be in Waitrose. Yep. Uh, we want to be in Severages. And then we want to be in Sainsbury's. OK. Mark, who's your target market? It's actually changed because of data that we've had. At the beginning, we thought it's about you know, 18 to 25. That was what everyone expected. But it actually turns out to be the 35 to 44s that are the most receptive to the product. I wouldn't for one moment think that that's a product for an 18 to 25 year old. Why did you think that? That's why I find that intriguing. It seems to be that 18 to 24 is what at least from research normally shows is that they tend to not drink as much. And I didn't know, I didn't know whether I was right. So I went and tested it with the first batch. And that was when I was proven wrong. Yeah, I'm just wondering though, what made you think that in the outset? For me, that's almost a bit of common sense. I, I'm going to say where I am, Mark, because I think that you pitch really well. However, your price point is your issue. When you have a conversation with the buyer at Waitrose to launch this product, you're going to find that this is a two-for-one offer immediately. Could I, could I say something? Yeah, please. Yeah, for me, it, that's why we're really focusing on online at the moment. We're, we're almost exclusively not trying to get into retail at the moment. Like, say, even tomorrow, if I get an offer, say, from Waitrose to do it, I know I wouldn't have the audience, the money, and the contribution to support that listing. Once we establish that customer base, then we can transfer that data that we have to show the retailer and say, hey, you know, people buy this despite this price range. Hmm. OK. I said I was going to tell you where I am, but I'm, I won't. Mark brings Peter Jones back from the brink of an exit by citing a well-thought-out reason for delaying his product's introduction into the big supermarkets. Now, Sarah Davies wants to know the beer brewer's recipe for increasing sales. How are you acquiring your customers online at the moment? So far, what's worked really well is testimonials, like what our customers have been saying. And once we sort of cap those reviews on our advertisement and on our page, people really respond to that quite well. I'm trying to understand why I would buy this. What we've got here is a zero alcohol beer, and then it adds a little bit of calming or nutrition. And I'm not sure those two sit together. Why am I worried about getting my nutrition delivered through a low alcohol beer? Because it's not about delivering nutrition. For example, if I put in vitamins in there, it just wouldn't make sense, right? Like, it's just, why, why would you want to have your daily vitamins in, in your beer? Uh, and it just so happens that this is a beer that uses plants that help you unwind and relax, rather than a low alcohol beer with added stuff in it. That was a really good answer. Oh, thank you. Mark, I think you've been full of really good answers. Your presentation's been impeccable. Peter was clearly about to go out, and then you, re you rescued him. Deborah had a really great question there, and I think your answer was superb. So then my focus comes to the product, and I think, is it the best non-alcoholic beer I've ever tasted? Probably not. And then I think about the shelf wars and the brew dogs of the world who all have their non-alcoholic options, and I think it's going to be incredibly difficult for you to go through that sort of retail route. You know, you're going to figure it out, um, but just not with me as an investor. Um, I'm going to say that I'm out. Stephen Bartlett thinks the beer business is a battleground best avoided and pulls out of a potential deal. Does Tuka Suleiman see any synergy with the entrepreneur's enterprise? You are the most credible 24-year-old 
that's ever walked through those doors. Thank you. It's a shame that you didn't walk through with a bit more traction. Let's say 200,000 turnover. That is a stumbling block in my head in an area that I'm not too familiar with. But I would say this to you, if ever you have another business that I am familiar with, I would definitely back you. Unfortunately, in the beer venture, I'm out. I think the product's great. I think you're clearly a great beer brewer, but I don't know if that price point's gonna work outside of a 10 grand test, which is where we're at today. We're literally just at 10 grand with the sales being made. Mm -hmm. So regretfully, I'm not gonna be able to invest a day. I'm out. I do think you have got a business here, and I think you're going to win a section of the market. There is a but coming here. I think you're going to get a lot of one-off purchases. And when you get a lot of one-off purchases, it becomes really expensive to acquire new consumers online. I'm afraid I'm not convinced, so I won't be investing. I'm out. Four Dragons have now called time on the light lager proposition. Only Peter Jones remains. Is he hanging around to propose a partnership? You've done everything right. You've pitched at the right amount. You've answered the right questions. Normally, we're saying, why don't we just have a punt and let's see where this goes? But the reason why I'm stopping is, ultimately, it comes back to penetration against the product, positioning and price. So I think you have a nice little business for you, but it's not as exciting as the taste of the beer. So, sadly, for that reason, I'm going to say that I'm out. But good luck. Thank you very much. Well done, Thank you. Good luck with this. Peter Jones likes the beer more than the business and bows out. But although Mark is leaving the den empty-handed, he's far from bitter about the whole experience. I thought it might be too early for them, and, and I think that's, that's right, but the, the lessons learned there, I think it's, it will really help us moving forward. Oh, well, cheers, guys. Cheers. I'm quite happy with what I've, what I've achieved so far, being 24, and, and I think there's still a lot more to come, and I, and I can't wait. Right, off to have some bananas. <laughs> and a bit of uh, orange juice on the turn. <laughs>